Hi, so please introduce yourself. Hi, so I'm Fenbar Moynihan. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Marketing at MediaTek. And uh, this Dimensity, the latest uh, chipset you talk about, is very powerful? Yep. So our latest, well, we've got a number of latest ones, but like um, we have our Dimensity 9000, which is our flagship line. Um, the latest product on that was the Dimensity 9200, which we launched in November. Um, we've also got an 8000 line for the premium products. And the latest one there is the Dimensity 8200, which we launched in December. And then just before Mobile World Congress this year, we launched the first of our 7000 series, the Dimensity 7200. And uh, how powerful is the 9200? The highest end, it's our latest flagship uh, product, checks all the boxes. So like four nanometer, second generation TSMC technology, the latest ARM IP, so we've got a Cortex X3 G, uh, CPU for the big core. Uh, we've got the Cortex A715s and the Cortex A510s for the big and the little cores. Um, we also integrate um, like the latest ARM Mali Immor or Immortalis G715 graphics, which supports features like hardware ray tracing on mobile. Of course, we can do you know 200 megapixel cameras. We've got like 8K video support, Wi-Fi 7 support, lots of like high-end features. And uh, and this uh, ARM uh, Cortex X3 X3 is yeah. is uh, one very big powerful yeah, component so, core. Yeah. So so the way we architect these flagship chips is we have one so-called extreme core, and that's the Cortex X line, and the latest version of that is the X3. Um, so we run that over three gigahertz. Um, and then there's big cores and little cores. So you kind of move from so one- tri cluster. Kind of, yeah. So you have one super fast core for like the highest single core computing performance. And then of course, as your load goes down, you can migrate all the way down to a little core for low power consumption. Nice. And here's a bunch of products. And, exactly, and they're actually so, in products. Exactly. So these are all phones that are available. So. For example, we've got the Vivo um, X90 and the Vivo X90 Pro. Um, so these are two phones that are shipping already with our Dimensity 9200. Um, so these were launched late last year, already in the market in China and now in, in other markets as well, like Europe. Um, we've got, for example, then some other phones here, like uh, we've got Xiaomi. We've got Asus that also launched a phone last year based on our previous generation, the Dimensity 9000 Plus, which is the uh, Asus ROG gaming phone, so a high-end gaming phone. And then these are some other examples of phones um, that we have with uh, like Dimensity 9000, Dimensity 8000 series products. Uh, so so it's just uh, ultra smooth. Uh, anything you can think of is fully supported. Yes, yes, super high end. The other thing that's maybe interesting, as you can see on the other side of the table, we also start to see kind of like a new wave of designs. So we have, for example, foldables. Oh, we have some. Oh, we have some foldables. So Oppo just launched uh, the Oppo Find Into Flip. That's a uh, flip phone based on the Dimensity 9000 Plus. And just today, Techno launched a full book foldable uh, product also based on Dimensity 9000 Plus. Nice. Is that too And you got really good power, uh, yeah. power consumption? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the advantage of the process technology with TSMC, 4 nanometer process technology, and also the architecture that MediaTek puts into the whole design of the, of the chip. Nice. Awesome. What's happening then, here? So here we're showing some of the technologies that are integrated into the Dimensity 9200. So on the left, what we're demonstrating on video is um, hardware ray tracing. So up to now, ray tracing is a technology that was only really available on high-end gaming platforms. Um, so ray tracing basically does subtle light effects on the graphics. So it really enhances the realistic imagery that you see on the graphics. So what you see here, on one side is, well, this is not quite the same, but on one side you'll see um, ray tracing turned on, and on the other side you'll see ray tracing turned off. You can see the difference between the two. Um, here we're also showing some capabilities around the camera. Um, so we have a lot of high-end features on the camera integrated into the Dimensity 9200. Um, also, um, on the display um, technologies, you know, you can see there's a, a technology that re reduces the motion blur. And this is, again, very important for high-end gaming experiences, so you don't sort of have phantom images on the, on the display. 
And here, we're just talking about some of the power consumption. So we have, we see a, a massive improvement in the power consumption for the Wi-Fi, because we've integrated in this platform a new Wi-Fi 7 capable chipset that's built in six nanometer technology with extremely low power consumption for Wi-Fi. So we see a huge reduction in the Wi-Fi power consumption with the, this platform. Nice, and it's not only more performance, it's longer battery. Uh, that's, which and, is a weird, which is very weird important. thing. And you can see, I don't know if we can see it somewhere, but um, one of the messages that we delivered as part of the Dimensity 9200 campaign was incredible performance, intelligent power. So we're always trying to balance the power and the performance that you get on the, on the platform. Somebody's commenting, uh, best chip 8100, 8200, and 9200. Yep, so Dimensity 8100. The new version of that lineup for the premium is the Dimensity 8200, which we just launched in uh, December, and you already see some phones available from some of our customers with that. And then for the flagship, the highest performance, of course, is the 9200. And everything's 5G now? Everything is 5G. Well, we still sell a lot of 4G products, and those are still important for certain parts of the market, but we think this year more than 50, to maybe close to 55% of the global market will be 5G. So certainly anything at the high end and certainly coming down into the other tiers is already 5G capable. And what's on the other side there? So let's have a look. So this is a, another demo that I was showing you that I was talking about the ray tracing. So you can sort of see as the bar slides, ray tracing is off on this side, ray tracing is on on this side. And hopefully what you can see is there's a lot more subtle shadows, light effects, when the ray tracing is turned on. So again, it's all about the gaming experience and having a more realistic, more immersive experience for the gamer. And so, like I said, historically, this was something that wasn't possible in a power-constrained environment like a smartphone. 9200 delivers that. Uh, like just a couple years ago, NVIDIA was saying, this is a cutting edge you can get on a desktop. Exactly, and now, and now it's on mobile. Exactly, exactly. So that's why I think it's quite revolutionary and quite amazing. Um, 120 this, hertz. This is, Every phone uh, is 120 hertz now? Well, but this is a technology which we call intelligent display sync. So if you think about how you use your smartphone, right? Sometimes, sometimes you want a really uh, high refresh rate if you're gaming. So you want to have like 120 hertz refresh or 144 hertz refresh. Of course, that's going to give you the responsiveness, but it's also going to give you higher power consumption. What our technology does is it detects what's happening on the screen. So for example, if you're just reading email or messages, you don't need to refresh the display at 120 hertz. And you can dial it down to a lower frequency. You still get the same user experience, but you reduce the power consumption significantly. And the real trick is then being able to respond very quickly when you want to go back to a high refresh mode. So what you see here is basically no degradation in the experience, but on this side, it's still 120 hertz. Here it's dropped down to, you know, in that case it was 30 hertz a quarter. So you can almost like save, you know, 75% of the power by doing that. No loss, no loss of user experience. Nice. Awesome. That's awesome. Variable refresh rate. Variable, yeah, intelligent display sync is what we call it. But it, it's taking advantage of the fact that you can have displays with variable refresh rates. Cool. Nice. Um, can you go all the way down to zero? No, there's probably That'd a minimum, nice. yeah. Like, but you can probably go down to like 10 or something, so it can go from 120 down to 10. And you can almost like think about that scaling the power consumption for that part of the system linearly, right? So it could almost go down by a factor of 10 or 12. But it depends if it's an LTD yeah. or uh, OLED, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. So there's all those. But so you've got to match it with the actual panel, of course, but that capability to sense what's happening on the display is built into the chipset, and then you can take the control action. The same chip can do both, correct. LCD, OLED? Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a OEM design decision for the, for the right. phone. All right. Cool. Um, do you want to keep going? Yeah. Right. Maybe yeah. I'll come over to the one over here. I think this is interesting. Um, so what we're demonstrating in this corner is another maybe major story from MWC this year is around satellite connectivity or satellite uh, connect connection. So we've been working on this for a few years. Um, MediaTek has a solution that allows us to implement bi-directional messaging for satellite communication. So I think we all know Apple launched this feature with the iPhone 14 last year. But MediaTek solution is based on the 3GPP standard, so it's a standard solution and it supports bi-directional uh, connectivity. So you can send and receive messages uh, with the phone. 
we've implemented as a, a, a standalone chip that you can integrate into any phone to add this capability. And we've worked with our partner, Bullet, who's got uh, a number of devices that they've also announced at this show. So they've got a partnership with Motorola, they've got a Caterpillar branded smartphone coming out um, that's going to be available in the next couple of weeks. And then they're also developing a uh, satellite uh, link product, which is essentially just a standalone product that provides the satellite connectivity, and then you can Bluetooth that connection to any phone. So what this is used for is basically emergency, you know, when you're out camping, hiking, remote areas, places where you don't have a cell phone coverage, you at least have the ability to contact somebody if you have an accident or you're in trouble or you need someone to come get you, get help. So that's the first generation. That's different from um, what Elon Musk is talking about, the Starlink. Uh, he's just going to expand cellular in space. Yeah, I mean, and then you don't need, but this is like a different protocol that yes, goes directly to some yes, specific so, satellite. So yes, so we're, we're, like I said, we're working with a standards-based approach. So it's, it's compatible with 3GPP, so the same organization that standardizes 4G, 5G, et cetera. Um, so we work with um, geo constellations, so um, you know, high, high satellite constellations that give you global coverage um, with the satellite today. Um, so there's lots of different kind of satellite constellations, lots of different kind of standards. But like I said, ours is available now, shipping in product soon, um, and allows for the bi-directional communication, which is really important. So soon every phone will have this? Soon every phone will have the ability to, to, to add it if you want. I mean, I think it's still going to have a service model associated with it. So, you know, will people um, want to do that or not? But we have that capability now. The other thing which we're demonstrating here is what's coming next. And this is still maybe two or three years out. And this is more of a next generation satellite technology, which we, which is called NR, NTN. So for you know new radio 5G, NTN, non-terrestrial networks, satellites. Um, and this is basically uh, what we're demonstrating here, is the ability to have megabit per second data rates over satellite connectivity. So in this case, you'd be able to do like video, video call, you know, other kinds of data services over satellite. So this is more of a technology demonstration. We're showing it actually demonstrating a, a video call from a satellite to uh, a regular cellular connected phone. It doesn't work indoors, no? Well, this, this, we're not connected to any real satellites yeah. yet. So what we're doing in the demonstration is we're emulating the signal that's coming from a satellite, just to show how it would work. Do you use an LCD phase array antenna on the phone? Um, well, maybe not. No, it's just... Uh, something else. Some, it's happening. just, yeah, yeah. So this is still standards-based. Uh, it's using the standard like L-band or S-band that satellites use. So it's a fairly regular satellite interface at those kind of frequencies. Nice. Cool. All right. I got one comment here. Uh, somebody saying, my uh, Xiaomi 12T has excellent temperature management. Thanks to the 8100 Ultra. Yes, that's a great device. So it's a really good device. And I think the, the Dimensity 8000 series has really kind of hit a sweet spot where it's a really optimized device for premium experience, but still giving you really good, good user experience and power consumption. Nice. Awesome. And, and you, you have lots of infrastructure stuff, modems Yeah, and so maybe moving a little bit beyond the, the mobile space, I'll just talk about a few things here. So another big area of... Um, focus for us is 5G beyond smartphones, right? So one of the trends we're seeing adopting quite a lot is 5G for fixed wireless access. So basically using 5G to bring uh, broadband to the home. And what you have here is, excuse me, what you have here is an array of products from leading operators. So you see O2, 3, EE, uh, Verizon, T-Mobile, Rakuten in Japan. These are all providing 5G broadband data access to the home. So this would replace cable, DSL, fiber, uh, to bring broadband into the home. So that's another area of focus for us um, in, terms of, um, in terms of what's coming. And then maybe the, the other one I would point out. Uh, are these the Chromebooks? Sorry, oh yeah, these are Chromebooks. Uh, With no, the like, Companio stuff. So, no, these are, no, sorry. These, ah, are, all, the these are all Windows. Uh, ah. laptops so um, we have a partnership with Intel and so these use our 5G model 5G module modem to provide 5G connectivity in the laptop uh, oh, nice. we have 
we have our Chromebooks over here on this one. Yeah. So how's it going with the Chromebooks? I think are you going to dominate this market? We are the number one ARM supplier for uh, Chromebook solutions. Oh, yeah? I mean, the Chromebook more market. Than Qualcomm. Sorry. You sell more than Qualcomm. Yes. Yes. The um, so you can see some of the products here. So we we have a strong focus on Chromebooks. Um, we I think had Chromebooks a really, are awesome. Yeah. They can bring uh, affordable. Yes. Excellent yes. laptops to yes. the whole world. And we started like I think our journey in Chromebooks started like and the education segment which is kind of the growth was the growth segment and of course that segment saw huge growth during the pandemic when everybody was like educating people and children at home but what we focused on since is also bringing high-end features into the Chromebook roadmap so we have now three tiers of Chromebook products we call them our Companio line so there's a Companio 500 which is the entry product which is probably a good fit for education there's a Companio 800 line and a Companio 1000 line and so we are bringing you know, high-end capability as well. High-end CPU, high-end GPU, AI, camera, gaming features to high-end Chromebooks. So you and see a range are, of products uh, here. Fully optimized for Chromebooks? Correct. It's not just taking a Dimensity and nope. rebranding it nope. as a Companion? No, nope. these, are, these are optimized apps processors for uh, Chromebooks. These don't have a modem in them. You know, they obviously can have Wi-Fi. Um, so you have different tiers, different display sizes, but you know, because it's like ARM-based technology from MediaTek, you get this super all-day battery life, which I think is very important for some of these use cases. And what I think is important, I, lo I love that Apple is doing the M1, M2, it's yeah. amazing. But it'd be nice to see something pretty much as good, but less than half the price, or <laughs> you know, not a quarter yeah, yeah. of the price, yeah. but a third of the price. Media and there part, you have media solutions. Tech part, media People tech can buy these for like yeah. three, four hundred dollars, exactly. right? Exactly, and you see like solutions from Lenovo, from HP, from ASUS. So we have multiple brands, multiple price points, high-end, mid-range, entry products. With a crazy long battery life, yes, and it yes. never slows down. Yeah. Like, we, whatever uh, you do with a Chromebook, it always smooths forever. We, we were recently at an education event, like a trade show for education for Chromebooks, and one of the things we did was we, we ran our Chromebooks all day without having them plugged in. So the demos were running on battery all day. It was like complete proof of the pudding. Um, so that was, that was kind of great. Nice. Cool. And some of them, they made them even drop proof, very yeah, durable. Yeah. Well, and then you just uh, give it to someone after a couple years, and it's like a brand new yeah. laptop. For, for young kids, it's, it's important. Um, maybe here, the other major technology we're, we're demonstrating here is the next generation Wi-Fi standard, right? So you've probably seen that we're moving now from Wi-Fi 6 generation to Wi-Fi 7 generation. So we have here, uh, sorry, uh, we have here a, a demonstration of our Wi-Fi 7 access point platform. So you can see from the demo, we can support over 10 gigabits per second on this, like so as high as 13 gigabits per second throughput. 10 gigabit Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi, yes. So this is Wi-Fi 7. So this is actually a live demo, and you can see the number here. So it, you know, it obviously changes a little bit, but you know, 13.2, 13 gigabits per second uh, on the access point, because Wi-Fi 7 adds six gigahertz channel. It has 320 megahertz bandwidth, so you get a lot of new features with Wi-Fi 7 that can really help the the throughput. But also, there's some other really cool features in Wi-Fi 7 that help with latency, uh, which is very important for some applications. Nice. Cool. So, uh